Hello there, Eruner here and today we will review Aetolians. Aetolians starts with Toas hero, which is uh, quite uh, balanced, maybe weaker, but he is using a lot of buffs and abilities to make it for. So you don't throw him into duels, but you support your troops with various abilities. One thing to to see what is different is that he got one guard deployment and also strider. This makes him uh, the better version of the Odysseus. So you can one guard with this hero and maybe with faction as well. Let's review his uh, units. On the infantry we are starting with Aetolian Militia. Instead of the standard Militia we go with the, these guys with access. They are also expendable. They indeed can be one card deployed. And the, here is one interesting ability. Forest Fighter. When you put them into the forest they will get more melee attack and melee defense. So outside of the forest they are quite weak, but in the forest they are worth it. Then in the roster we got standard, young spears, solid, charger and duelist. Very valuable unit and recommended. And Aetolians come with alternative to, to this uh, charger which is Aetolian Riders. They are weak in the melee, they don't have the best weapon, but they have stalk and flanking and vanguard. Very cheap unit, very very good flanker. Ideal flanker has very good speed, it has flanking attack improved and stalk. And and the fact that you can vanguard deploy it is even better. This is one of the best flankers or one of the ideal flankers you can have. But keep in mind, this is very squishy and very weak unit. Then during the early game we got access to Spearman, which is a terrible frontline and it is not recommended. Then we got Light Swordsman, which is a flanker unit, very standard from the Watchtower building. And since we got slightly better or cheaper and faster flanker, for this faction I do not recommend it. Then we got Axeman. This is uh, an alternative to your front line. They are more offensive, they have ok weapon and ok stats, but in general I do not recommend these units. In early game you will have to do a lot of flanking or fighting in the forest. Then in mid game we got access to standard shielded spearman, very solid front line, it can heal up and put shields on the back to have more damage and charge. This is pretty good uh, frontline unit. Then we got uh, upgrade of our chargers or flankers. They also have the stalk and flanking and vanguard. Their weapon is uh, good against swords and uh, large units. They are also fast for being such uh, well armored. They are no longer squishy and I recommend using this unit. Next. We have our frontline, which is an uh, improved version of the regular Axemen. As you can see, they do have forest fighter ability, so your frontline will be doing the best in the forest. And that's it for the late game. We got the charger upgrade, not heavy, but medium. It's keeping relatively okay speed. It has amazing attack. It, it keeps stalk and flanking, so this will be very good flanker and charger as well. 
doing a lot of damage if you are successful with it. And for frontline, we got shielded axe unit with very solid uh, combat stats, very good weapon, and again, in the forest, this is the best unit in the game. Now let's move on to the missiles. We start with standard Ekian Slingers, they are always good, always recommended. Then we got Aetolian Skirmishers, they are quite fast, they, you can vanguard deploy them and hide them in trees or even scraps. So you can ambush with javelins very nicely. And just a bonus, they are also good in the forest when they run out of ammunition. In early game you still got access to missiles. Uh, they do not have stalk, but if you hide them in trees or scraps, you can snipe uh, enemy units without them noticing you. So, as you have noticed, this faction is ideal for ambushing and fighting from the forest and it's just like Iteka but different. And also in the early game we got access to uh, skirmishers, they are solid uh, missile duelists, they get a lot of models to start with and that's why they are able to dish quite a lot of damage. Then in mid game we got uh, these Aetolian hunters, decent range and damage. You also deploy them into the scraps so they can sh snipe enemy units. And then we got Aetolian javelin men. These are unique Thanks to this sharpshooter ability. This uh, javelin, like a first standard missile unit in the game, has very strong sharpshooter ability. It means it completely ignores enemy shields. It is uh, very dangerous, very powerful, but the models has been lowered to make it uh, balanced. So the damage output is like uh, with different uh, javelins, but you can easily ignore shields and shoot frontally. This is very nice unit, but you need to keep in mind very low speed. On the end game, we got upgraded version of the javelins. They have very solid melee weapon, quite good combat stats. So when you run out of uh, ammunition you are able to fight in the forest and also it has sharpshooter this will deal a lot of damage and it's costing similarly to justify this ability and damage output and for missiles we got Caledonian bowmasters they have a standard range and pretty good damage output and, as always, you can vanguard deploy them into scraps so you can snipe enemy units. So, that's it. Now we can have a look on the chariots. We got standard medium ch chariot and heavy one as well from the Echian roster. So again, this is just like Iteka but much better not, on, not only thanks to uh, heavy melee chariots, but also this variety of new units, more fighting in the forest. And you can deep one card deploy the whole army, maybe except some standard units which are not recommended. Let's have a look on very simple uh, battle. When you start the campaign for this faction uh, you will be able to attack a settlement and since this settlement is on the level 1 it will be the open field battle instead of the settlement battle. Right now I have to pause because 
uh, we are not starting from standard position like here but we were able to vanguard deploy it right in on the edge of the enemy deployment zone enemy deployment zone is somewhere like here and we and we are able to deploy the whole army right into the face our game plan is simple we got frontline which will reveal itself from this uh, grass we got missiles to go and shoot they are still hidden in the grass nice and on the sides we will bring our stalking flankers and chargers so we got very standard uh, low tier missiles we are going to micro as usual make some nice flanking situations our missiles will be better against enemy slings so as you can see one slings is already gone the second one will be deleted as well and here we will make a nice charge against enemy uh, light swordsman enemy hero very nice then we just mm, targeting any units that needs to die and that would be it for a Victory very quick battle so thanks to stronger strong missiles and very good flanking we were able to route enemies very quickly and win this battle efficiently you can achieve more decisive or even heroic victories by using these ambush tactics that is all see you later